Hey, what's up? Seth Mosley here on the Made It Music podcast. I'm here virtually with VP of Marketing for our Academy, Logan Crockett. How you doing, Logan? Hey, doing about as well as you can, given the circumstances, which means mostly pretty good, but <laughs> it's just yeah. a little different. It's different. The circumstances are that it is normally we don't say the date on a podcast because we want it to be sort of timeless. But today is, as of the time of us recording this, March 25th, 2020. And the reason why that's important is because we are really having to flip a lot of things on their head because of the coronavirus crisis that's going on right now that I'm sure all of you listening are very much aware of, hence why we are in separate locations, mm -hmm. definitely doing our social distancing and using the beauty of technology to bring you this podcast. But the thing that I will say is I think this is actually, even though this is kind of a coronavirus, how musicians can survive and thrive in the face of coronavirus and the crisis, this is going to be a very timeless episode because of a lot of these principles that we're going to be talking about today really are things that people should kind of be putting into practice all the time, right? Yeah, there's a lot of things that we've been learning during this season that will definitely apply to just a lot of how you should think about your own music career moving forward. Um, and also, like, like, just right now, during this, just what the country and the world is going through, it's kind of a historic like this is definitely going to be in our kids' history books. Um, and so, so it's kind of interesting just to capture what's going on right now in the music industry um, for the sake of actually documenting what it's like. So that way, hey, five years from now, 10 years from now, maybe we'll have some people listening back on this podcast and, and checking out what it was like to, to be in music during this coronavirus situation all the way back in 2020. Yeah, exactly. And it is indeed crazy. I think the people that are the biggest impacted are obviously people associated with live events, touring artists, their crews, their musicians. They're the ones who are hit the hardest. And then as I was thinking about it yesterday, I was on the phone with uh, an A&R over at Warner who uh, she, she's married to a guy that's a booking agent. And I didn't think about booking agents, but hey, they're in trouble right now. Mm -hmm. Um, as of yesterday, he still has his job. And so thankfully, uh, and, and I don't, I don't think, I don't think a lot, if a lot of the big agencies, I think they're going to be fine. Um, events aren't necessarily canceled. They're more so just postponed, at least for the, for the most part of what I've been hearing is artists yeah, a will. Lot, a lot of spring tours are moving to the fall. Exactly. So it's, it's kind of a matter of, um, yeah, just shuffling things back, which for, for the short term is really awful for people that's, that's income, that income depends on going on the road. So um, we definitely, our heart, our heart definitely goes out to you if you're listening to this and if you're a musician or a crew member or an artist who is being directly impacted by this. And so I thought a really good way to just start this episode would just be to list off a few resources that we found for all of you who may not be aware that there is assistance out there, financial assistance um, available. And the first one I wanted to mention is Grammy's Foundation Music Cares. Music Cares is a really great organization that exists to support musicians in times exactly like this. And you can find info there at grammy.com slash music cares that's m-u-s-i-c-a-r-e-s -E music cares and then kind of along those lines another great organization is called the musicians foundation musicians foundation has a very specific covid19 uh, fund set up that you can go and you can apply for financial aid you can just find that at musiciansfoundation.org musiciansfoundation.org and then the last one that I'll mention is, along the same lines, sweetrelief.org. Now, these aren't new organizations. These, are, these were around long before the coronavirus crisis, but it's in these times that we all figure out, okay, well, this, this, is, this is what these organizations and, and nonprofits are here for. And so if you're a musician, 
definitely check out all three of those resources. If you're in need of financial aid, you can go fill out an application process. And, and yes, they're, they're overloaded right now. But I know all three of those are doing the best they can to handle all the applications. And hopefully by next week, they'll be able to, uh, at least according to Musicians Foundation, it says they're about a week out in, on, in terms of you know, getting to uh, check out the applications. So those are the first three things that I would mention because, yes, everybody's got bills to pay. And I know a lot of people are freaking out about that right now, which is very understandable. Um, and... The, 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 la the, the, the other thing I would say under resources is now is a really good time to make sure that you're staying connected. You, you, the last thing you want to do right now is isolate. And I've just seen, really, it's been, it, it's been quite, quite interesting. I've seen more connection in this time than I have in other times, specifically because people are having more bandwidth to just go after relationships and, and, you know, spending time with family and friends and people they care about. Obviously, if you're single and you're, you know, not in a family situation, it's really important to make sure you're staying connected, even virtually, and a really great place to do that and to network with other musicians is our Song Chasers Facebook group. Uh, Logan, you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah. So first of all, uh, the place that you can go to get access to that group, the easiest is fullcirclemusic.com slash group. Uh, and all the links, that link and all the links that Seth just mentioned, we'll make sure to include in the show notes for this episode. So that way you can click right on them if you would rather do that. But yeah, with our Facebook group, it, it has been interesting because our Facebook group is normally pretty active regardless. But during this time where people have been extra at home much more than normal and have been prevented for, from perusing much of the uh, normal normal outside activities that, that they would normally do. Uh, it, it just caused our Facebook group to actually become that much more active. So there's more posts than normal. There's more people interacting than normal. We've definitely seen a lot of people uh, talking about uh, co-writing and collaboration with other people. And so, because we know a lot of people, it, it's easy for us to say, well, hey, you know, you're at home. And so now's a great time to go out and, you know, collaborate with people virtually. And for a lot of you, that can be much easier said than done, because a lot of you probably don't have other people in your world to collaborate with. And so I would highly encourage you, especially if that's the case for you. Um, yeah, check out the Facebook group, fullcirclemusic.com slash group because that's why we built that resource for for normal times and for times when the whole world needs to basically collaborate virtually so yeah it's really great i've been encouraged to see people on there uh just encouraging each other sharing each other sharing music with each other offering each other feedback and one of the things that so many people especially in small towns maybe listening to this feel kind of isolated like they're going at this thing alone like there's not anybody else that gets it there's not anybody else who's of a maybe similar mindset or or even just a a good objective sounding board for music and that's been one of the most exciting things i've seen is people on there who are genuine genuinely going after this dream of pursuing music and they're offering really helpful feedback to each other so Really want to encourage people. Again, that's fullcirclemusic.com slash group. So those are kind of the resources. That's how I thought it would be a great way to start off this episode. For those of you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, we apologize if there is an occasional glitch. Uh, we are running off of very mediocre internet at the moment. But hopefully you can hear me fine. And if I freeze or if Logan freezes, give us grace for that. We're all just trying to make this thing work and bring you tons of value despite of the circumstances. Yeah. And ultimately uh, the, we, we do normally record these podcasts in our, you know, nice professional recording studio. Uh, so yeah, even if you're not on YouTube, even if you're just listening to the audio version, you might hear that it's not quite up to our normal quality standards. Um, and so yeah, appreciate a little bit of grace for that. But the most important thing is that we are able to still come to you and talk about the music industry and let you know what's going on and let you know how, what you can do to continue uh, your journey to make it music full throttle. So, 
Exactly. So one thing that we are all having to learn, whether we are musicians or not, is this concept of working from home. In this season, most of us are kind of quarantined in our houses, which may or may not mean having kids around because they're obviously out of school right now, too, and dealing with the craziness. So um, how, how, do we, how do we work from home? Well, there's a lot of beautiful technology like we're using right now. Let's just start with that. Zoom is a really, really great application. I, uh, I like it way better than FaceTime and Skype, personally. I've found that it is a lot more stable. You can record your calls. You can, um, you know, assign a, 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 an, a specific audio source. So, like right now, I'm talking in my microphone that sounds really, really good, and Logan's able to hear that fine. And it works really great for for meetings that would have otherwise been in person, and in my case, even for songwriting and production sessions. Um, and it really for our team. We've kind of adopted a mentality, as a lot of the music companies have, of as much as we can, we're full steam ahead, business as usual. We can talk a little bit later, Logan, about how FCM is impacted or not impacted by this current crisis, but um, our company is making very good use of Zoom. We just had our full team meeting on Monday with, I think... 15 or 16 people on on Zoom, including our you know in, awesome interns and apprentices. And so you kind of just have to look at changing your process. And um, why don't we just dive into that a little bit as, as far as what, what the process looks like? Yeah. So, and, and are you talking about your process um, that, like, what process are you talking about specifically? Yeah, we can just talk about the the process. <laughs> the process. Um, um, no, I think I think for songwriting, we can talk about that. We can talk about the production process, and and we can even just talk about for for your team, uh, the academy, what what it's sort of been like. So, um, yeah. wherever you want to start. So, so there's definitely obviously our, our company does a lot of different things, and so when a company and just when a workflow and when normalcy is interrupted. Uh, by something like this going on in the world, then yeah, that, that definitely causes you to need to create new processes. And yeah, I'll, I'll start with just a little bit of what our team has been doing. Um, most of us have been on, on the marketing and academy side of things. We have been working from home. And it has been great as far as the internet and <laughs> keeping us together. One thing that we really love to use uh, is a platform called Discord. Uh, D-I-S-C-O-R-D, and it's actually a chat app that's meant for gamers, um, but it is really, really, really great in business settings because it's really easy to have all kinds of different conversations going, and it's 100% free. They're unlike Slack, unlike Asana, unlike a lot of that stuff where to really get the use out of it, you need to go on a paid tier. Discord is pretty much completely free, and so I, I love it for that sake, and it's been working wonders for our team just to Staying in, staying in communication and being able just to talk to each other just pretty close, not, not the same, but, but almost like we're in the office. And then, yeah, and since the academy is um, something that is online, as far as our online courses and our YouTube channel and our podcast and all the different aspects that go into our academy, um, a lot of people on the outside probably haven't noticed much of a difference because we're still responding to support emails. We're still responding to the live chat on our website. We're still uploading content every single day to social and YouTube and all of that. So, so the process there has just been um, a matter of, th th there has been a lot of things that is really helpful about working together with people in a physical location where you're able to train someone or teach someone how to do something, or if you're if there's a certain project going on, they can just show you in the moment what they're doing with it. Where now you just have to be a little bit extra intentional. And I think that's been the biggest thing that we've been learning is you have to be very, well, when there aren't other people physically in the room or nearby where you are that you're collaborating with, you have to be very, very, very intentional about your communication. And so if you're in a band or if you are um, in, in some sort of other anything um yeah if you're producing songs with other people or anything like that wh where you might normally be able to 
communicate in person, you just have to be so much more intentional about what you're communicating, how you're communicating, and you, you never ever want to assume that people have the whole picture in their brains. Normally, over communication in the, these kind of circumstances is definitely going to be a better side to err on than under communication for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and one really cool tool that I'll shout out. I actually just used this yesterday because sometimes when you're talking through production, it can be helpful to show people like on the screen, like this track and this waveform and this thing. So I like using a tool called Loom. I actually use that with one of our writers. I believe it's totally free, just links up with your Google and it, it does a little cool video screen capture, puts your head in this little circle bubble down in the, the window and, and it, it kind of captures your whole screen. So you can, if you want to show somebody something or create like a standard operating procedure or show somebody how to do something on YouTube or whatever. It's a really great way to just record that. And it's almost like you're kind of there showing them on their computer. Um, I believe you can do it with iMessage too. I think that's something that you had brought up, Logan. Yeah, you can actually, well, one disadvantage of being remote is that sometimes, yeah, if you're showing someone something or if you're collaborating on someone with something, then it's nice to be able to just use their computer and show more to click or something like that. So one great thing literally built into iMessage now, um, I don't even know if they still call it iMessage. Apple just calls it Messages now, the, the Messages app. Um, and so it's on iOS and it's on Mac. And you can, um, you can just Google this, how to do this, but basically you can do screen sharing with messages. So that way you can actually not only see what's on their screen, but you can literally control what's on their screen. So if I'm training an employee and I need to help them learn how to upload a podcast to a, to a podcast platform, then I can literally quote, take over their computer virtually through the messages app on Mac or on iOS. And I can literally click around on their computer remotely. So that way it's almost like I'm in the room with them showing them what to do. Exactly. So that's super cool. Check that out. Um, I guess the big thing I would like to say about my process and really how it should kind of apply to whoever's listening out there is I've tried to treat it as much as business as usual as possible. If I have a writing session on the calendar, I'm going to keep it. It's just going to be virtually. We're going to essentially do the same things we would do in the room. We're going to hop on. We're going to talk about ideas. We're going to share ideas with each other. Um, it helps to have something pre-started, especially over Zoom, so then you can kind of more throw those all in the in the virtual pot and then see what each other are, are excited about. And then you can kind of tweak on something and upgrade it and make it better. So my process hasn't really changed a whole lot on the production end of things. I mean, me and X, X O'Connor, who is our co-producer, was my co-producer at Full Circle Music, for those of you guys who don't know him, amazing, amazing Grammy-winning music producer. Um, he is currently set up at his house. He's kind of made a impromptu home studio as I have and we're working away. We use a program to live stream audio to each other when we're doing like mixed tweaks or revisions. That's called Audio Movers. I know today we're throwing out a lot of technological applications for you. So if you're wanting to uh, check out any of that stuff, again, as we said, it's going to be in the show notes at madeitmusic.com. Really all you need to know is madeitmusic.com. If you get there, you can get to the show notes. You won't have to remember everything we're saying. But um, Audio Movers is really, really great for doing real-time production tweaks. We actually just did it yesterday morning, and it works phenomenal. So X is able to be playing a session in Pro Tools, and I'm listening in real-time and texting him, hey, can we try turning the snare up on this chorus, or can we try like beefing up the kick drum? And then he does it, and then I hear it in real-time, so it's, it's almost like you're there. So that works really good. Um, I guess my encouragement to all of you out there is to really use this time as much as you can. I know it's chaotic, but use this time for productivity and for building your, your catalog. If you're an artist out there, if you're a musician whose tours have been canceled, well, you may not find a more uninterrupted time than now to spend writing uh, or, or for, you know, working on your next record. Most artists nowadays are having to make their records kind of in between tour dates or on the road or in the back of a bus. Well, now they're all home. So, um, yes, there are situations where, you know, kids are at home, uh, and that's hard too, but 
the thing that I'll say about doing these remote sessions is there, you get a lot of bang for your buck in terms of the time. Um, I was just on one yesterday with uh, amazing writer Liz Rose and uh, Hunter Hayes. And Liz had some really good wisdom at the beginning sharing that, you know, on a Zoom write, if you don't get something pretty far down the field within an hour, you're probably not going to. Zoom really is, it, 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 it forces you to think about just keeping the main things the main things in, in the writing process, which really are kind of the melody and the lyric. Um, I think a lot of us, especially who are producer writers, and I'm very much that, can sort of get in production mode and we can be thinking about the soundscapes and the, the recording a great vocal sound or recording a really cool guitar loop while we're in the writing process. But with this, you don't really have that as an option, so it's good to have stuff that's pre-built and generally it, it happens pretty quickly. So even if you have kids at home, this is possible. You can put on a movie for them for an hour or you know, even 90 minutes. You can get a lot done on Zoom in 90 minutes. So even if you can just dedicate that every day, your kids will love it. They, they love watch. My kids get to watch. Uh, they love Blippi is their big thing now. They get to watch Blippi every day, and it's, it just works great. Yeah, I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old. So, And if, if you can see on video, they're the ones right behind me. I don't know if, you can, if that's showing up or not. The black and white pictures, yeah. If you're, seeing, if you're on audio, obviously, check it out on YouTube. But um, I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old. So, yes, it is chaotic. We're in the middle, as you can see, also. My, I'm recording this in my kind of home garage space, which is full of furniture. We're in the middle of a home renovation as well, too. So there, there really is no excuse. <laughs> if I can do this with, with a home renovation going on, with being at home, with having two small kids, then you can absolutely do it, too. Um, so it's just, it's just carving out those times and making sure that you're, uh, obviously, your kids are taken care of and using the efficiency of, of Zoom to get it done. So works really, really great. Um, the other thing that I would say is the people that are thriving in this time are the ones who have mastered being able to record themselves and to be able to have some form of a home rig. Um, I think nowadays, is if, if you haven't already invested in some form of a home rig, now would be the time to do it. We can talk a little bit about the economic problems here a little bit later, Logan, but um, having a home rig doesn't have to be complicated. I mean, you know, I've, I'm looking at my home rig right now. I have a Focusrite interface that maybe was a couple hundred bucks, an SM7, which you can find these used on eBay for $300. It's a great microphone. If you have a laptop, that's pretty much what you need, maybe a small MIDI controller. Um, and if you have that, there, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can get a, a lot of mileage out of even just some of the free softwares like GarageBand, um, the iOS devices, even if you have an iPad, I mean that can be a great thing. Just to, if you have that in your your AirPods, that you can. I've heard people do some pretty amazing things even just with that. Yeah, and there is a free version of Pro Tools. Um, if if anyone just wants to Google Pro Tools first, um, that's totally free as well. So yes. Um, so Pro Tools, Logic, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. It just matters that you pick one and, and, and try to dive into it. Learning to record yourself is the key skill. And it really has been, too. I, I would say the people that are kind of late to the game on being able to record themselves and having some form of a home studio are, are kind of having to ke play catch up right now. Because a lot of people have been doing this for a long time. So it's like, oh, OK, well, this is just you know business as usual. But even more excuse to go out and get that interface, get that microphone, and just learn the basics of it. If you can just learn how to record yourself, you don't have to be an amazing engineer. The software out there now is so easy to use. And um, we actually even have a production mini course that we can give away for free um, if you're interested in learning how to do that. You want to talk a little bit about that, Logan? Yeah, so you can find that at fullcirclemusic.com slash free production course. That's um, type that in as all one word. So fullcirclemusic.com slash free production course, all one word. 
Uh, and again, we'll, we'll have that link in the show notes as well. But yeah, it, it's basically just, just a seven part um, little mini series uh, with Seth and X, uh, really um, Seth and X started, but, but mostly X who, who does a lot of our, um, the heavy lifting on a lot of our production projects. He, he basically just shares um, several of, of the biggest things to think about if you are recording your own songs. Um, or recording songs for other people. And so it's a really, really helpful um, starting place for people who might be getting into this. Uh, it's also really helpful because it basically, again, it goes into seven specific uh, kind of tips and tricks, if you will. And so even if you are, if you, even if you already have a rig and you've already been inside of Logic and Pro Tools for a while, the things that X shares in this course are um, likely things that you haven't thought of before and things that you know we do on a professional level so again whether you're a beginner or whether you're more advanced i think that this will be really really valuable for anyone uh definitely a great free giveaway for right now because quite honestly and again running the academy we we have a lot of people who email us support at fullcirclemusic.com if you haven't emailed us before you're welcome to try emailing us and see how fast we get back to you, you might be surprised uh, because we love helping musicians that's what we do and we have people uh, that, that we just end up communicating with all the time. And one of the biggest, uh, I don't wanna say excuses, but, but one of the biggest reasons that, that people give us for having trouble learning how to record their own songs or spending enough time songwriting or getting good enough a guitar. Um, well, one of the biggest things that, that we hear is that people don't have enough time to do that because they have this, full-time job to worry about basically and so for a lot of you right now you may not have that full-time job or a lot of you might have hours cut or at the very least maybe you maybe you have a full-time job and you still have a full-time job you're just working at home but at the very least you probably have a commute that's been cut out of your life um so in one shape or another, you, you probably have some new time that is available to you that you didn't have before. And a lot of people, it's so easy, especially in a time where it kind of feels like a crisis, it can be so easy just to um, kind of crawl into your comfort zone and just be like, you know what, I'm just not going to do anything. I just want to get through this and I'm just going to cook food at home and I'm going to watch Netflix all day. And that's cute and all, but that's not a very good way to get better at music. And a lot of you know that we recently came out with what we call the, um, the music industry baby steps plan. And it's basically this whole framework for actually making it in music. That's the name of this podcast, Made It In Music. We want as many people as possible to be able to, we want as many of you listening to this as possible to be able to get to the end of, of these baby steps that we've created where you can actually say that you've made it in music. And, and one of the biggest things that people overlook at, basically again, the, the baby steps is just a framework for, okay, if you really wanna make it music, make sure you do this first and don't worry about these other things until you do this first. And then once you've done that, then move on to the next step and the next step and the next step. It really compartmentalizes everything so that way you don't get overwhelmed. You always have specific things to focus on that go in order instead of jumping all over the place. Because if you listen to advice from different people, um, different people in the music industry, everyone has their own opinion and they're all telling you all these really good things to do, but you're probably an individual person and you don't have you know, a huge record label or management team behind you. And so you need to figure out on your own how to navigate through this stuff. And so that's why we created the baby steps in order to help you navigate from one piece to the next piece to the next piece as seamlessly as possible. And it's been really, really cool to see how people have used that so far. That's a little bit of a tangent, but the reason that I bring that up is because, especially something like baby step two, we talk about literally just needing to get so good at your craft. And baby step two, you should not move on to baby step three until in baby step two, you feel really, really, really competent and skilled. And like you're, you're a high level player in your craft, whether that means music production, whether that means songwriting, whether that means being a guitar player, um, any, of that, any of that kind of stuff, you, you need to get really good at it. And, and I, that is where probably throughout the entire Baby Steps process, again, there's, there's seven big groups of steps that we kind of outline throughout that Baby Steps process. And people, people really get tripped up on Baby Step 2 because honestly, in Baby Step 2, we tell them practice. like like 
that, that that's most of what baby step two is just getting really good at your craft and and yes it's good to have good instructors it's good to have good training it's good to have good tools but the biggest thing that that is actually going to make that happen for you is practice just sitting down drilling in on your craft and getting good at it and that and practice to do that requires time and so yeah we, we have all kinds of people who are like i just don't have time to get good enough to which we say well if you can't find the time then the music industry might not be for you it's just the reality is, is you're going to have to get good at your craft if you want to do if you want to really become a professional in the music industry um, so, so please, right now, uh, to just a lot of the, again, I don't want to call them excuses, but just a lot of the reasons why people say they don't have enough time to practice, a lot of those reasons that people normally have for not having enough time have just been thrown out the window through this whole coronavirus situation. And obviously, what the world is going through right now may have created a whole new world of challenges for you. And we get that. We, we understand that people are in different situations and, and this may not apply universally, but for most of you, for most of you, especially in the United States, right now, you probably have more time on your hands. If you really think about it, if you literally look at your day, the 24 hours in a day, um, you, you probably have more hours available to you to work on music than you might have had a few weeks ago. And so use that to your advantage and get through baby step two and practice and hone your craft and make some awesome things happen. Yeah. So again, if people want to get that link, the access to the free production mini course, that was again, Logan, what was that? Fullcirclemusic.com slash free production course. And because yeah, right now is a really good time. It, it's not a very long course, but right now is a great time to go through something like that because hopefully some of you guys have the time and you can not only watch the videos, but then you can actually, again, practice what X is showing you to do. Awesome. That's so good. Well, thank you for putting that together for everybody. Um, let's transition into, I, I want to address one of the, let's call it rumors that have been floating around. It's not really a rumor. It is a fact. Um, streaming numbers, especially on Spotify, have been down, at least as of this week, about 9%. And that's definitely a concern for a lot of people. But the big reason, if you kind of pull it back, is that a lot of people are obviously not driving in their cars. They're not going to work or, or making their commutes. So they're, they're not necessarily listening to Apple Music or Spotify or Amazon. What they're doing now is they're consuming a lot more on-demand video. So people are at home, they're, they're consuming music videos via YouTube or Vimeo or other sources like that. So I don't personally necessarily see it as a net negative. Yes, musicians do generally make less money on a video stream on YouTube than they do on a Spotify stream. So yes, that, that's not as much of a positive thing, but hey, at least people are still consuming it. They're listening to the music and they need it now more than ever. I mean, we talk so much about why we do what we do. It's because music has power and it has power to change lives and it has power in times like these to be a life preserver for people. So some people who feel like they're drowning and need encouragement, they need a song to get them through their day, to, to let them know that everything's going to be okay, or just to, to let them know that, hey, it's okay that everything's not okay. The world needs those songs, and so it's in times like these that I think music is even more important. Um, I talked a while ago, I think it might have been a social media post, that you talk about the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where the bottom being just, you know, safety, shelter, food, those kind of things, um, and then up at the top being, you know, self-actualization. A lot of people are kind of questioning, well, where does something like art or, you know, music fit in there? And I made the argument that that it is, it would be at the bottom of the pyramid. So you've got your physiological needs, you've got your, your safety needs, your belongingness, love needs. I think it lives throughout all of the steps in that. And so that's where if you're a musician, if you're a writer, if you're, you know, even if you're supporting musicians and you're not necessarily the writer yourself, this is, this is the time for us to kind of step up and help provide those songs for people. And however they're consuming them, whether it's on Spotify or Apple Music or YouTube, it doesn't really matter. It just matters that they are getting the songs and that you're connecting with your audience. So um, 
there may be some perceived doom and gloom about that streaming being down. I wouldn't let that freak you out too much. Uh, obviously, things once we get back to the normal, people are going to be back in their cars. They're going to be streaming the music again. It's just different ways of consuming it. So my official recommendation is don't freak out about that. I am not a streaming expert, and I don't work for any of the services, but um, I do know that people are still needing those songs, and they're still consuming them one way or another. So that is kind of my official take on that. Do you have anything to add to the, to the streaming rumors, Logan? Uh, not really. I, I think I, the only thing that, that I'll throw out there, just because I think it's interesting, is that... Uh, Music streaming, as far as just listening to it, like Seth said, not including video, but just actual audio streaming, um, probably correlates in, in the marketplace to what is happening at gas pumps. If, um, if literally the gas pumps are being used less, then music streaming is probably down as well, just because if there are fewer cars on the road, uh, then fewer people are listening to music in that way. And so, yeah, so if some people are worried about Spotify or Apple Music or, or what they're seeing on, on those platforms, uh, definitely don't be because, um, you know, cars are going to be back on the road probably fairly soon and that things will go right back to where they were. So, yeah, exactly. And uh, so, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk next about social media, because once again, people have more time on their hands than they maybe had before as a whole, as a generalization. So social media can be one of the best ways for you to invest your time now in building your audience, building your following, hitting up Instagram lives. I've seen, you know, uh, a, a few artists that we work with who have really taken advantage of this time and they're doing Instagram lives like every night, getting on, playing songs, answering questions, telling stories. And I think that's a really powerful thing. And people need it right now. So it's it's kind of like having your own TV show. It's having your own reality TV show is really what a lot of these things are. So the people who are going to come out stronger after this are the people who have endeared themselves to their fans during this crazy time. They're going to have an, a deep emotional attachment to you if you've invested the time to get on there and do it. Yes, it's hard to, to get on there and do it every night. And if, if you have five people on... Well, that's where it starts. The next night, maybe you'll have six. The next night, maybe you'll have 10. Maybe you'll have 20 the next week. And it doesn't have to be massive numbers. All of those things are a success because what you're doing is cultivating, uh, you know, hopefully lifelong fans who will be with you and they maybe even met you during this crazy time. So um, I think there's a lot that can be done in this time, whether you need to create content for YouTube um, whether you need to, uh, Logan talks about this idea of batching that I think is just brilliant. So maybe just dive in a little bit to that. Yeah, well, Seth is definitely right that there's a lot of opportunity for live video and live streaming right now because people are kind of expecting it in a different way. Sometimes, I mean, here's the other reality. Right now is a such a unique time in history. Literally, forget everything else. Just the fact there are no live sports happening. Um, right now is the month, month no of March. No distractions and, whatsoever. <laughs> and, and, and March Madness isn't, isn't a thing. Um, like, like it's, all, it's all just not happening. So it, literally there's this concept called share of ear, um, which is there's only so many hours in a day and people consume content within that day. And so different industries, if you will, compete for that content. You have your kind of professional TV shows competing with YouTube, competing with live sports, competing with music, competing with podcasting. Um, you can't consume more than one, in most cases, you can't consume more than one kind of content at once. And so the, um, the, in te technically, all these different ways to consume content are competing with each other. And literally, um, th there's some of these big, big players one of them being live sports that's basically just been shuttered for, for a little while. And so that means that there are, people do have more bandwidth and they're, and they're also just, you know, not going out to restaurants and they're not going out to events and they're just kind of staying home. All that to say, people are a little hungrier and more interested in things like live videos right now, because it just, it feels like an appropriate thing to do in our culture. It feels like 
just what people are doing. And if you haven't really been into watching live streams before, now is a time when a lot of people are experimenting with checking out different people who are doing live streaming. I don't have data on this, but I, I bet Twitch is doing pretty well. Twitch is a, a, an online platform that's totally dedicated to live streaming. Um, so yeah, definitely take advantage of it on that level. And I want to give a really quick shout out just to some creativity that I've seen. Um, growing up and, and getting into concerts, one of my all time favorite bands was, was a group uh, called Hawk Nelson. Um, and, and they're still active, but uh, they had, um, though the band started with a guy named Jason Dunn was their lead singer. And so he's not a part of the band anymore. But just yesterday, just just last night, um, I watched him do something really, really creative. I'm uh, just taking some of those old classic songs and doing a live performance of them online. And it was really nostalgic and really fun. But but he's just he's taking this whole idea of touring and doing lives in a bit of a different creative way, where he's doing what he's calling basically a home tour. And so he's still quote going on tour, but every single night he is doing this, these performances from a different room in his house. So one night it's from the kitchen and one night it's from the bathroom and one night it's from the kids room and one night it's from the basement or something like that. And it's just, it's, I, I really appreciated that because it was just such a clever way to say, Hey, yeah, we're quarantined. We're, we're stuck at home, but like I can still kind of have fun with it and be creative. And I, I'm going to just do a different show from different rooms in my house every single day. And I don't know, just something like that is so fun. So I, I wanted to definitely give a shout out to just, um so many of the opportunities that are happening with live right now yeah and yeah no and i, I just i don't want to skip over that point that that literally the share of attention really the thing that all of us are fighting for nowadays is attention mm -hmm. and the thing that sports does so well and the thing that netflix does so well and the thing that um really any of the the programs is they they get people addicted to it and that's a little bit of an extreme way of saying it, but if you can make a routine out of showing up on Instagram every night on your own little reality TV show, talking about what happened that day and playing some of your, your music, then, hey, your people are going to come to expect that every night. And then, you know, they may end up, you know, after all this stuff blows over and it, it, the, the sports come back on they may end up coming back to you because it's, you know, the person that they've been watching every single night before they get to bed or whatever it is. So um, I can't emphasize that point enough that, yeah, literally just sports not being on right now means that you have so, so much opportunity to garner people's attention. Yeah, it, it's just, it's, it, there, there's a lot of challenges going on right now, but, but there's a lot of, honestly, like just unique um you, you, unique things that the musicians can take advantage of right now. And so I, I just don't want musicians to, to miss uh, the opportunities that, that are there. And so yeah, let's talk about batching really quickly. Um, batching is basically this idea that a lot of times when you see things on social media or YouTube, things that aren't live basically, because live, if you're going live on video, then that obviously means it has to be there in the moment and real time. But but a lot of other stuff on social media, I, I just saw, and here's a perfect example of this. Um, Toby Mac uh, is, is definitely an, an artist that, that I admire and follow. And he posted on his um, social feeds a few days ago, uh, something about how they were, how, how much he loved what they were doing with church on tour and how they would have these different church services when, when they were going on tour together. And so he posted a picture of them all being like, like the whole tour kind of being together for this little church service. And it was really cool. But he literally made a caption uh, down at the, or a, a little note, if you will, at the, at the bottom of the post that said, by the way, this, this photo, you know, isn't from like today. It, it happened a month ago because this, you know, we're not on tour right now. And so, so that's a case where people kind of expect or, or if they see a photo like that, they're like, wait, people aren't social distancing in that photo. What's going on? That doesn't seem quite right. So because of that, people know it's not in the moment. But if, it, if this whole coronavirus thing weren't happening, and if, um, if, if literally that, that notice wasn't put in the social media post, most people would see that photo and just be like, oh, it's another day of tour, even though that photo was taken a month ago. So the, the point is, is that when it comes to creating content that is not live, you don't have to do it so close to when the content actually comes out. And so, 
something that something that we do as a company is we love to batch record YouTube videos. Um, you might notice that right now, if, if you're watching um, this podcast on, on video, you might notice that Seth's beard is kind of long. Um, and you might notice that in some of our uh, recent YouTube videos, his beard is much shorter. And the reason for that, just a little behind the scenes secret, is that we've or a lot of the YouTube videos that are coming out on YouTube right now um, for Full Circle Music were recorded several months ago. And so right now is a unique opportunity. If, if you're not comfortable going live for whatever reason, or if, or if you just find that social media and YouTube and all that kind of stuff is, it, if it can be a struggle to keep up with sometimes, it's a unique opportunity right now to just make a whole bunch of YouTube videos. Like literally th think about it this way. If you make 25 YouTube videos, if you can make 25 YouTube videos, and if you can come out with, if you can just create those, you will be able to have one video every single week come out over a six month period. So if you can just record 25 videos right now, you, will, you can literally be set up for an entire six months where you don't have to record another video. And that can just be really, really helpful as, as far as just getting content out there into the world. Because yes, so many musicians, artists, songwriters, they say, oh, I don't have time to be posting on Instagram and Facebook all the time, and I don't have time to be making videos. Well, just make a whole bunch right now and just schedule them to go out over time. It's called batching, and it's a really, really, really great thing that I would encourage a lot of you to do right now. Yeah, and if you're not comfortable being on camera or, camera or improvising on camera, that is a maybe that's a skill that you need to work on developing in this time because it is a learned skill just like anything. I mean, even what we're doing right now, this this act of recording a podcast, that wasn't something that came naturally to me. It's something I had to, to get good at. So for many people, the the video creation the, the, the video creation best friend is having a little teleprompter. Um, you can type up whatever content you want to tell the world. You can kind of pre-prepare it, craft your message, and then just read it. You know, obviously you got to get good at doing that off of something like this. This little parrot teleprompter, you just put it right in front of a DSLR, you stick your phone on it, and it, it works. You can download the apps on the App Store with it. And um, something like that, if you're not comfortable speaking on video, can be a really good way to ease into it. For those of you uh, listening to the audio version of the podcast, Seth just held up um, just literally a, a little teleprompter that, that you can buy on Amazon. And we'll, we'll include a link in the show notes if, if you want to check it out, or you can watch the video if you want to see what that looks like. But exactly. Fill you all in. And, and a quick book recommendation. I, I think the best book, and Logan, maybe you have a, a, a recommendation as well, but the best book that I think I've read on social media that would be a great read or listen on audiobook for people uh, during this time is Crushing It by Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, it's the tagline is how great entrepreneurs build their business and influence and how you can too. He talks about all the different platforms, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, um, Facebook, Twitter, all those different things. So the, 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 the point being you, you really, especially as musicians, you know, social media is not our full-time job. It's just a way to connect with an audience. So people like Gary Vee, they're literally just full-time media personalities. That's not necessarily what a musician is, but you have to ha adopt some of that mentality as a musician. So a lot of people get overwhelmed by, well, should I just focus on one of the channels? Um, should I try to go after all of them? And my encouragement would really just be to kind of narrow in on those one or two big platforms. Um, I personally think Instagram and YouTube for musicians, obviously having a Facebook page so you can run ads uh, at some point. Um, but that would be my book recommendation is crushing it and really just focus in on those one or two platforms. Unless, unless you're more familiar with Facebook, then I, my, my rule of thumb is always using whatever platform you use the most as a consumer. Exactly. Um, yeah. well, whatever platform you care about the most. Um, cause, and and cause a lot of people, I, I think, especially in the music industry, a lot of people, kind of get this vibe that, that more is going on on Instagram lately, but, but really, especially holistically as far as social media, that's not really true. Um, Facebook is, is 100% still the big dominant force on social media. Um, it's massively bigger than Instagram. But if you're more into Instagram, use Instagram by all means. Yeah, the, chal the challenge on Facebook, and, and this is something we've experienced as a company, is obviously, you know, we can, we, we dive into the, we could do an entire 
episode oh, yeah. just on just on social media and, and the the pitfalls of trying to build your audience and your platform on somebody else's platform and why it's important to have your own email list and um, your own own your own fan base. But one thing that Facebook has done to their page owners is they've kind of screwed everybody in terms of the uh, you know the reach. You 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 now pretty much have to pay Facebook to show your posts to to your followers if you have a page. It it really it it really depends. Um, that, that that can be true, but but honestly, um, I, I've looked at some of the data recently, and, and that that is kind of something that that has a lot of truth to it. Um, it's definitely not like it used to be a decade ago where just if you had a Facebook follower, then pretty much everyone saw it. Um, but, but honestly, right now in Instagram isn't, isn't really that much better. Yeah. It's the, they're, they're all the same. I was, I was kind of using that as an example, but, but the point being any of them can change their algorithms at any, any given point. It's not to say don't use them. It's just to say, I, I like, I like what you said, Logan, that yeah, Whichever one you're the most familiar with and that you like the most, start there. Um, but there's a there's obviously you know the the next step in that is kind of owning your own fan base and getting them over to an email list, and and that's something that we could do an entire other episode about. So we don't have to dial into and we'll, that. But. We'll we'll do that at some point for sure. Um. So so real quick, just to let everyone know, Seth, let, let's go ahead and let people know about um, a deep dive that that they can get after this episode. And let's go ahead and make it about, um, I, I know that we want to talk about some different ways that people can use some creative business models and find some unique financial opportunities right now, because a lot of people we understand um, are out of work as far as, you know, just if you have a traditional job, you, you might be financially, there might be some financial things to um, be figuring out right now. And then, yeah, and like Seth opened it up with, um, with, uh, if, if you're reliant on live shows, then you probably especially need some extra income right now. Um, and so we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about some of those options for some creative business models and selling merch online and um, ways you can help out other musicians for, or, or companies for, for money. Um, we, we have some good ideas about that. So we'll, we'll save that for the deep dive and, and chat about that there. Sound good? That sounds awesome to me. Cool. Let's go ahead. Um, let's talk about... Oh, the, the, this idea of just where we think things are going to go and kind of um, just how the music industry is going to look coming out of this. Before we jump into that, one thing I, I want to cycle back real fast to, to the beginning of this podcast, um, where, where you were just talking about um, live music and how it has, um, and how it has, the whole coronavirus situation has definitely affected the live music side the most. Um, I think a lot of people, unless you've actually been on a professional tour, you might not realize how some of those financial models actually work. Um, and just the fact that, for instance, most people on who do anything related to live shows are not on salary, for instance. Um, and so, yeah, Seth, really quick, could, could you just give people the, the 10,000 foot view of like, um, well, like on a, on a more personal level as it relates to people running merch, as it relates to people running live sound and lights, um, and backline and, um, even, even musicians who, cause, cause you've, I mean, you, you've been a paid musician for artists like Peter Furler before and stuff like that playing live. So could you just walk people through like how the live business model works really quick and just so that way people have better context of why this is hurting them so much? Yeah. And I, I've, I've definitely been on every side of that. I, I, I was the artist. I, I was paying musicians. I, we were, we were getting paid for doing live shows. I've like Logan said, was, was, you know, a paid musician at, at a time or two. And yeah, that the live model is exactly that. It's based on showing up live and essentially selling tickets to a fan base that will come and see the show. And they'll also buy the merch from the artist. So, so yeah, everybody is affected by it because it takes, it takes a village, you know, that, that, that's, that's sort of the old adage, but it takes a village to make one 40 minute live show happen. You've got a front of house engineer who's running sound. You've got probably a monitor engineer who's running the in ear mixes. You've got a drummer, a bass player, a keyboardist, uh, a guitarist, sometimes a couple guitarists, um, backup singers. You've got your uh, production manager. You've got your your uh, booking agent to to book the show in the first place. You've got 
your your local promoters putting on the show. You've got the people running merch. You've got your union labor to set up and tear down the production, which brings you into a whole other thing. You've got the production companies that are getting hit by this right now. And you can just imagine the list goes on and on and on. That's not even counting the airfares that are getting, you know, getting hit for the people to get there and then the hotels. And then it's just, it goes so far down the line. So yes, this is a huge, huge economic impact. But the big thing that I do want to say is I want to encourage people as much as possible. Yes, I know it's hard if you're in that situation. I, I definitely, my heart goes out to you. And, um, you know, my hope is that you can use this time to get creative and use some, some of your other skill sets to make an income. Um, but really more than anything, use this time to invest in yourself. Um, I think a lot of what is happening right now is, you know, people are, ha- are creating new business models. They're, they're finding ways of, you know, uh, connecting with an audience that isn't just about going on the road. And there are ways to monetize it. Um, selling merch online is becoming a big thing, you know, um, social media, like we just talked about your videos, being able to monetize those on YouTube through ads. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can use some of your other skill sets to make an income, but, but, but the, the, the big 10,000 foot overview is that money didn't just disappear out of the economy. It did disappear from some people's paychecks, which is very hard. But the money's still there. It's just a matter of people are sitting on it. And for whether for fear or literally just for not being able to obviously do the event due to the coronavirus right now, um, they will happen at some point. Like we said earlier, most of them are just being postponed. So I will say that I think this is just a season. And so if people can hang on to their, their faith, their hope, their drive, that, you know what, once we get out of this season... Things are going to bounce back. It, it, it might take a while, but the money didn't just disappear. People are just literally sitting on it. And this is affecting everybody. I mean, I'm, I'm also a, my side hustle is in real estate investing. And so ver- there's, you know, a lot of people that are being impacted in the real estate side of things, because if tenants aren't able to pay their rent, obviously that's an issue. So people are working out emergency rent deferral payment plans because yes, it's the landlords still have mortgages to pay. They have bills to pay. Um, and the property managers still have businesses to run. Banks aren't just going to say, Nope, you don't have to pay us. Um, unless you're in a more socialist country, I believe the UK has instituted something like that. I'm not sure how that applies to investment properties, but that is a whole nother rabbit trail. We don't have to go down. Um, but, the point being, this is a tough season. Don't freak out. Money didn't just disappear. Um, and maybe use this time to, to find how can you diver- diversify a little bit and create a business model that isn't reliant on going and being solely on the road 100% of the time. And this is something that a lot of artists have been sort of moving towards anyway. Um, but now is the time to really hunker down and invest in yourself. It's not the time to be scared and, um, you know, hoard things and, uh, really just stick your head in the sand. You really need to use this time to invest in yourself. And so the people that come out of this season, it's almost like for, for a lot of people, this is either going to be like a boot camp, or for other people, it's going to be like a hibernation. The people who come out of it with the boot camp mentality are going to be that much more primed to shoot out of the gate once this thing blows over. So that's my encouragement for people as much as you can. Um, obviously, we've talked a lot about practice. You know, for a lot of you guys who have purchased an online course, if it's one of ours or somebody else's, you know, we have Song Chasers, we have Music Production Mastery, our Platinum Courses, we have the Baby Steps Plan. If you guys have purchased that, now would be a good time to kind of go through all of that. Um, for a lot of people, they've got that stack of books piling up that now would be a great time to really read and invest in yourself and with information. Uh, listening to podcasts, obviously, Logan, we've got uh, well over 150 episodes as of the time of recording this that people can go back and binge listen and get your entire uh, master's degree in, in, in the music business by just listening to the podcast episodes because they're 
That's why we do what we do. We bring people on who are black belts in their field. And when Logan talks about, you know, that little mini production course, I mean, these are not just people who decided to make a YouTube video and had nev never done it before. I mean, these are Grammy, this is a, these are Grammy winning people that are doing it every day. And so um, the other thing that I would encourage you is, you know, maybe use this time if you don't have a skill set that kind of stretches out of your norm, use this time to develop a new skill set or maybe learn a new trick. And um, Logan, let me grab something really quick. Uh, I, I, I just want to show people. Um, I actually got this. I saw this on an Instagram ad. I'm, I'm, I'm holding up if you guys are listening to this. It's, it's called a Picasso. It literally is like a mini violin bow and has a little pick on it. And um, so I'm learning this thing right now. I'm just going <laughs> to grab my guitar for those who are listening. All right. I'll, I'll narrate while you do that. Oh, never mind. Your guitar is right next to you. It's right next to me. So this is, I, I love using live strings on, on stuff. And this is a way that you can kind of turn your guitar into a... Uh... <laughs> kind of crazy, huh? That's really fun. That's so this, awesome. So this is one thing I've been practicing and learning so I can kind of become my own cello player. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll that'll probably impress some co-writers that that's, that's a great little well it'll make its way onto some records too so so yeah just just to say you know use this time to invest in yourself if you can look at this time as your as a, as a boot camp rather than a hibernation um that would be my biggest encouragement 100 percent um so seth yeah we can go ahead and close this up with um just, just talking about, yeah, what, where we think things are going to go in the music industry and, and how, how we think things will affect or have affected and will affect full circle specifically. Uh, and then we'll get into a quick lightning round after that. So I'll just let you kind of. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, the, the good news, at least for our company, is that, you know, production, we, we're really built on, around, we produce records, I write songs, we have a publishing company with songwriters that write songs. And we have our academy, and that's that's really the the big thing. The academy is largely online, so we we haven't had any live events, thankfully, that have had to cancel. Um, it's still kind of full steam ahead on production. We haven't had any production projects cancel. We're just doing things remotely, and on the publishing side, people are still having their remote writing sessions, and you know, royalties are still coming in. Songs are still getting played on the radio. Um, so for us, we haven't, we, we, our business model is somewhat insulated to it. Yes. I think six to nine months down the road, we'll probably end up seeing a royalty dip from, you know, live events and people may be consuming music a little bit less on streaming, but I, I don't think it's going to be a significant hit. Um, but for, yeah, again, for a lot of people, it's, it's, it's the people who are involved in live events that have been hit the most. So I, I think once we come out of this, um, a lot of people are talking about this pent up demand and, and that's really what I think we're going to see. I think people are going to be like, you know how, if you like go on a diet and then you get out of it and then you just want to eat everything in the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I think, exactly. I, I think we might even see a little bit of that with like live events. Like people are going to be like, finally, I can go, go to all my shows and go to, go to all of them at once. Yeah. They, they, these, uh, fall tours might be some of the highest attended shows that have happened in a while well and people will appreciate them in a new way too I, I think i think that's the thing that we're all learning is to not take things for granted you know it's it's a little bit cliche a little bit hallmark cardi but like i've that's been one big thing that i've you know it's, it kind of gets your focus back on keeping the main thing the main thing and so for a lot of people you know for for me and my family that's been like just getting back to our to our uh to our faith and really just reconnecting with God in a way that we haven't in a long time, um, connecting with each other. And then when we come out of it, it's like, Hey, when we go out and the first live event that we go to where there's a bunch of other people, I can imagine everybody will still be kind of on edge holding their breath, but they'll probably have a, probably have a new appreciation for it and be that much more excited to be there. So I think it's going to be kind of like a rubber band to just shoot, shoot back. And, um, we're, we're, we're going to have an exciting, I think, 
back half of 2020. I don't know, and nobody really knows how long this thing's going to take to blow over. It's definitely not going to be a overnight thing. It's going to be a season. But I think sometimes, sometime towards the summer and, you know, as we get into the fall, the music industry is going to be in a, a, a great place. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Hopefully, that, that people can can look forward to, and yeah, just a, a general, a general message that that I don't think people need to like panic. And oh my goodness, the music industry is over, and so I'm gonna you know go totally change careers or something like that. Yeah, definitely don't don't make any rash decisions right now. It's especially that's just good life wisdom. Like when when there's a crazy crisis going on, do not do do any crazy testing do not go make a big pivot because now is not the time to do that you're you're not going to be in a in a, in a rational frame of mind it's going to be probably made from a place of fear and, and yes there are we again want to acknowledge there are some people that do have to make some changes right now we do realize that but but don't go you know throw away your dream or like say well music isn't for me because it's it's not happening right now um just keep your head down, keep developing the craft, keep working, you know, if you've if you've jumped into our baby steps program, keep working those steps and and uh keep moving the ball forward. The baby steps are going to work whether there's a, a world crisis or not, so. Exactly. Absolutely. All right, Seth, let, let's lightning round this thing real quick. Let's do it. I'll even give you a sound effect. Lightning round. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful um okay so give me really fast uh a plug-in that has really helped you while you have been working remote. plug-in alliance adapter um for a lot of people changing rooms is a crazy thing of not knowing what things sound like and using an a b to reference with like other mixes that you've done that you really like or other top 40 stuff that's out there we're using that every day what is a family activity that you've enjoyed doing while you've been together? Uh, being outside a lot more. We've got our, our neighbors have chickens that we, uh, we go down and help with. So going down and collecting eggs every day. My girls love that. So I think just spending time outside. That is awesome. Um, some sort of tool that you are using uh, either around the house or, or in your music rig that you are using now that you didn't use so much uh, when you were going to the studio every day? Hmm. That's a great question. I'm going to, I'm going to cheat and, and say this example, this Picasso thing again, this isn't necessarily around the house, but it's something I've been trying to force myself to use just because I have the time to, to work, work at it now. So the little Picasso guitar pick bow thing. Awesome. Um, give me give me a song that you have heard a lot because your daughters have been playing it and you're stuck at home, so it's been going around the house a whole bunch. <laughs> uh, well, whether it's my wife or my daughters, the new Justin Bieber record, um, Forever. I think it's his one with Post Malone. That's on. That's on repeat. <laughs> Super grand. Um, okay, and then last thing, give me a some sort of household supply that you're running low on right now. Well, since we're in renovation, we're kind of living off of paper plates and paper bowls. So right now, we're completely out of like disposable bowls. <laughs> so <laughs> we, uh, I think we have an Amazon delivery. Thank God, Amazon is still alive and well. Yes, that would. If, if if Amazon weren't weren't a thing, that would probably do have a whole different kind of effect on the world. Right exactly. Now. Well, very good. All right. Well, I think that that's all we got for everyone. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I again, I just want to leave people with the encouragement that during the coronavirus crisis, or even if you're listening to this sometime in the future after this thing is blown over, I hope a lot of these resources and and concepts we talked about were super helpful. But for musicians, we can. Re it's a great field to be in. It's a hard field to be in, but it's a great field to be in because you can survive and thrive even in the times of crisis. It's just about getting creative and uh, really being a master at your craft. Absolutely. And so, yeah, we're, we're going to jump into a deep dive where, again, we're going to talk all about uh, some different business models, some different opportunities to actually make money right now. 
um, some different things musicians can do, uh, and just some different things that almost anyone could do. But just right now, that there's some unique opportunities and some things to think about, and some stuff that, um, like for instance, I know Seth has a personal trainer that, that he's been working with. That, that's a switch to a really interesting business model. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And so that'll be again in, in the deep dive, and you can get access to that deep dive for free by going to madeitinmusic.com. You can get access to the deep dive right there on the homepage. So we hope to see you guys in the deep dive and we hope to see you guys in the next episode of Made It In Music. We'll see you there. What's up? Thank you for watching the Made It In Music podcast season three. If you want to check out any of the other episodes from season three, click up here. And we talk in the show about these really cool deep dives with all this extra bonus content. And if you want access to all of those, click here.